what the hell is wrong with you is a likely remark you would get if you stuffed your face with bugs while in the United States or Europe. However, much of the world eats insects. From crickets to mealworms, scorpions to black ants and grasshoppers. In this part of East Africa in Uganda, the lure of grasshoppers is just too strong to resist. They are so popular, they can be bought by the sacks across the country. Sold fresh, boiled or fried, or in some instances eaten raw. The hoppers, also known locally as nsenene, are a famous delicacy for many. The insects are washed down with drinks in restaurants, homes and streets across the capital Kampala. Grasshoppers are just one of 2,000 known edible insect species, a quarter of which are consumed in Africa. Ugandans and others in the region are among over 2 billion people worldwide who eat different species of insects every day. According to a United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimate, a three-year concerted effort to turn insects, the creepy crawlies that most people squash without a second thought, into tasty treats has also been a hot debate heating up in many countries in the West. A growing global demand for high-quality protein, along with a movement toward sustainability and against processed foods, are a few reasons behind the growing population of bugs as food. Back in Uganda's capital Kampala, during rush hour, young people with baskets or plastic buckets meander through the traffic selling the sought-after snack to commuters. Others sell fresh green ones with the wings and legs already plucked off that can be prepared at home. During grasshopper season, their crunchy, salty flavor sparks a feeding frenzy in the country. But since they are seasonal and mostly caught in the wild, they can be unavailable when most needed due to overharvesting or contamination with pesticides. The appetite for the crispy critters has created a booming informal trade that has turned some grasshopper trappers into wealthy men. This is why two years ago, the boarding of Uganda's national carrier Flight 446 from Entebbe to Dubai was momentarily disrupted when two of the passengers started hawking Senene in the aisles. Other passengers lit up in excitement. They couldn't believe their luck. Despite November usually being peak season for the insects, there had hardly been any around. The video from the plane went viral. In the short clip, the hawker dishes out grasshoppers on cash orders without any interruption from the cabin crew. It wasn't immediately clear whether he had been allowed to hawk within the cabin or if he was only a traveling passenger who tapped into his business acumen, combining the scarcity of grasshoppers with the opportunity to avail them to fellow travelers. Of course, there were grumblings about security breaches at the airport, but Uganda Airlines seemed sympathetic and themselves spotted an opportunity to turn the incident into an enterprise. A statement on the company website read in part, We are considering adding Senene to our menu for regional and international flights on request. Clearly, once a subsistent delicacy trapped in polythene bags or between the folds of flapping blankets, mostly by women and children, the insenene trade has evolved into a booming sector in Uganda. Admittedly, the insenene are not for everyone, and many tourists from the West often cringe at the mere thought of dark compound eyes on a speckled head joined to a winged segmented body swirling around in their mouths. But I hate to break it down to you, if you eat chocolate, pizza or spaghetti, you are already eating insects and worse. The US Food and Drug Administration allows 30 or more insect parts and some rodent hair in every bar of chocolate.
nearly two maggots in a can of tomato sauce and up to 450 insect parts and nine rodent hairs in every box of spaghetti. The only reason for this is because there's just no way to get rid of all the creatures that might hitch a ride along the food processing chain. So the FDA has to allow what they call food defects which you eat without knowing. The West can therefore hopefully look at cultures that eat insects knowingly with admiration as opposed to disgust. According to UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, the most commonly eaten insect groups globally are ants, beetles, bees, caterpillars, cicadas, crickets, dragonflies, houseflies, grasshoppers, leafbugs, locusts, scale insects, termites and wasps. In addition, each insect has been known to deliver an enormous punch of protein for its size. According to a report by Global Market Insights, the U.S. edible insect market topped $55 million in 2017 and is expected to grow to nearly $80 million by 2024. Europe is on track to do the same, while Asia-Pacific nations are expected to eat $270 million worth of insects by the quarter of the century. If this trend continues, on a breakfast table in the not too distant future, everyone might be toasting bread made with cricket flour, drink a protein smoothie made from locust powder with a side of mealworm bacon. This meal will likely give you four times the iron, more than three times the protein, and more key vitamins and minerals than the bread, smoothie, and bacon you eat today. At a recent conference in South Africa to promote the use of insects as human food and animal feed in assuring food security in Africa, it was discussed that our world will grow from 7.7 .7 billion people now to 9.7 billion people in 2050. And in the next few decades, we'll need to figure out how to produce enough protein for 2 billion more mouths. Simply ramping up our current system is not really a solution. The global livestock industry already takes an enormous toll on the environment. To them, livestock are hungry, thirsty beasts, gobbling up valuable land and water. The general message was that livestock are a potent polluter, thanks to the animal waste and veterinary medicines that seep into soil and water. Insects, on the other hand, have a sky-high feed conversion rate. A single kilogram of feed yields 12 times more edible cricket protein than beef protein. Some species of insects are drought resistant and may require less water than cows, pigs or poultry. Over a quarter of the world's land is used for grazing livestock. Another third of the earth is dedicated to growing crops that will be eaten by the livestock. Just think of it. Consider the devastating effects of climate change, overfishing, water shortages and a reduced productivity of crop growing fields. And it's easy to see how insects will soon be the protein of the future. It has taken the plant-based food movement decades to get to where it is now. More and more people are turning vegan, gulping oat milk and munching on plant-based meats like soya sausages and soya chicken nuggets. In a few short years, the once frowned upon plant-based food industry has grown radically from being a niche market for tofu and veggie burgers to a multi-billion dollar industry with record-setting IPOs like Beyond Meat, the world's first vegan meat alternative to list on the U.S. stock market, and insane valuations like Oatly, a fast-growing Swedish oat milk brand which was valued at $10 billion last year. If insects can do the same, it will be a big win especially for African countries that have been including insects in their diet for generations. Putting all this into perspective, it appears Uganda with their senene are sitting on a gold mine. 
There you go guys, I'd like to thank our great supporters on Patreon whose generous contributions allow us to keep creating more high quality content. If you'd like to help out with the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely enjoy the ones on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.